If you're like me, then you use standard I.O. a lot during development to debug and refine your code. We get to pick to use standard I.O. over USB or UART0 with the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK. What if we want to use both for different purposes? So perhaps run a protocol over the USB to communicate with a host computer while continuing to use UART0 for debugging telemetry. One way of doing that is to use TinyUSB to build a CDC driver for serial communications. This is quite a lot of work, certainly more than just using standard I.O. Provided we don't want to use any other USB services, then there's an easier way, I think. Let's dive into standard I.O. and see how it works on the Pico. So let's just have a look at the basics. So we're going to use a really simple um, main program that's just going to count and print out a count number um, on the standard I.O. So we've included standard I.O. and we are going to initialize all the standard I.O.s. We're going to do a little sleep just to let line settle down and then we're going to go through a loop which is just going to count and uh, print out the value of I. So over in the make file we're then going to set up and I'm going to send the output to the UART and I'm redirecting my UART here to be on pin 16 and 17. And I've got another video where I show how to do that and the fact that you, you can actually um, push standard I.O. on any pins that are um, UART0 function so that you can move them around. I quite like using pin 16 and 17 because they're nice and close to the SWD port on the back of the Pico, which just keeps my wires in a nice uh, neat place. So my setup in this video is going to be basically having my Pico connected via USB into a Raspberry Pi 4 and then the Pico's UART 0 connected into my Mac via the debug probe. So if we use this CMake file and um, here and we've got the definition so it's, it's going to UART0 we can actually see an example of this counting and you can see my blue screen on the left here is the only one that I'm actually managing to get any output on and that is coming from my Mac and coming through the debug probe from UART0. If we change that around and we uh, turn off UART standard I.O. and put it onto USB I.O. or standard I.O. over USB then um, and rebuild that then now we've got nothing coming out on my blue screen here that's nothing coming out on the UART but actually the count is all coming out via USB coming through my Raspberry Pi 4. Now what surprised me is if I set this to to come out to both rebuild that and compile it then actually we now have the standard I.O. coming to both of those services. So I can see the same count identically on both the UART and on the USB. So if I can do that, then I can surely drive these separately and put different messages on those two channels. So let's dive in and have an explore of how we can actually do that. So if we have a look at standard I.O. and some of the special functions defined for the Pico here, we of course have got our standard I.O. in it all that we're all used to calling in order to set everything up. But also there's a standard I.O. filter driver command. So we're able to filter down which driver we're actually setting the standard I.O. output to. Um, the documentation doesn't say a great deal here, but it does make it clear that there is a list behind here and that we can filter on just a single driver. So let's have a look at that and have a look at what's going on here. So if we have a look inside the SDK itself, remember we've got the full source code for this. I'm going to have a look in source, copy to common, and then I'm going to have a look in Pico SDIO and the standard io.h file there. So here we go. And you can see in here, we've got that definition for that standard I.O. driver. So that's where the type definition is uh, that we're referring to. Now for the definition for our UART, which is the one I want to actually standardize on, 
that's actually over in the Pico standard IO UART uh, folder and we've got an include file folder there and we can see standard IO UART.h and down in here we've got a standard IO driver uh, type standard IO UART and that's the driver definition so if we want to filter to just UART that's what we're going to set it to so let's have a look back in our main program so we've got everything set up so we're going to be allegedly pushing things out to drivers and uh, this time I'm going to actually do some filtering so I'm going to filter on the standard IO UART now I've included that because I've actually got um, the include of standard IO UART up here in my includes section um, so now when I print out this count that should only go out onto the UART though actually in this I've also got this print go statement and that's before the filter so that should go to both the UART and to the USB so let's have a look and see if that's what we get and yes you can see here that the blue and red channels are both getting go so that's blue is the UART the red is the USB and then the USB doesn't do anything after that but the UART is showing the count standard IO unfortunately includes no specific write functions to write to a specific driver so standard IO put s driver isn't there what we do have is the definition for our driver so if we have a look at the USB um, driver and the USB definition we've again got the standard IO USB so theoretically we can do something with that and output on USB only let's go back and have a look at the definition of driver so that's in the standard IO includes and there's an extra level of standard IO and then there's a driver.h file in there and that gives us the definition of this driver structure and in here you see we've actually got three functions so we've got pointers to functions for an outputting characters output flush and input characters so write read and flush cool so we could call those directly so back in my example let's pull in the USB definitions for standard IO and then we can actually use this out character function here on standard IO USB to actually write out a buffer I'm going to have to give it the buffer and the length of that buffer and I'm going to use sprintf to create a special string to put out on that I'm having to use both carriage return and line feed now because this function isn't doing a lot of the processing that printf is so back in our code um, back in our on running code we can now see go printing on both USB and UART channels then this specific strings are being sent to each of the two standard IO channels success exactly what I wanted to try and achieve this seems to work well on reading as well so we can both read and write from both of our two standard IO channels it is still experimental I know of one issue already with this so if I do an SWD reset um, after loading code onto the device sometimes I get a kernel panic I have no idea what's triggering that I am trying to work out what's going on it doesn't seem to happen on reset or power um, cycle of the device so it is simply on an SWD reset which makes it an unlikely issue to have in production this video hasn't used very much code at all most of it we've been talking through SDK code so um, there's not really much to share but I have put up a github repository which does include the small amount of code I've shared in this video my plan for this is to use the approach with micro ROS so I can connect the Pico to a ROS host using USB but use some debug telemetry over UART I'll let you know how I get on let me know what you think of the approach to using standard IO in the comments thank you very much for watching please like the video as that helps others find it if you're not a subscriber please do subscribe and click that notify button for more videos from me goodbye for now